what up, Randys? Uh, I'm Stan here from Random Tens, and uh, it's Pokemon's 20th anniversary officially today when you're seeing this, but uh, it, we're recording this two days before, but still during that peak season of Pokemon goodness. Yeah, and uh, I'm Neon, or Brett from Random Tens as well. You probably don't see me too much around anymore, but I'm still in the background and I'm still here with Stan, so we're going to talk about what he was just talking about. Yeah, so on this podcast today, uh, which is kind of our first one, it's not our first one, we actually used to do a small podcast for friends and family and stuff, uh, just because I think we both really like talking about uh, gaming nonsense. And I think we have some pretty ridiculous theories and uh, opinions on the matter, so... Yeah, so yeah. so we always kind of had a thing, it was called Audio Sloths, but um, we've kind of, you know, disbanded that, we might put it on that channel, whatever. Anyway, but today... For our inaugural one, we thought, what better time than now during, as I mentioned, Pokemon's, like, huge return moment. Like, this is, like, it's, you know, high school reunion, 20 it's years. Happening. It's It's yeah. crazy. It's absolute insanity. Uh, the world, now that Fire Emblem Fates has kind of shipped and is out of the way, Nintendo's really starting to, like, focus in their energy on Pokemon. Uh, yesterday, uh, there was a Pokemon Direct uh, pretty early in the morning. Uh, celebrating the 20 years. Again, we're recording this two days before, so we haven't seen it yet. But no idea. Um, we kind of know a little bit what's going on, but we'll get to that eventually. Yep. Um, but yeah, so that is what this is, and uh, we hope you enjoy our little podcast. Um, here we go. All right, so before we get into this, uh, here's just a kind of quick summary of what we're going to be talking about during this podcast. Uh, so we're going to start off by talking about our experiences, uh, kind of a Brain Scratch comms retrospective on our, uh, you know, growing up with the Pokemon series and what it's meant to us uh, from our early days right up until the recent Gen 6. Uh, and then we're going to get into each of our favorite designs, uh, as well as our favorite starters, which is pretty uh, timely as I just released my own favorite starters. But you'll get to hear Neon's favorite starters. <laughs> my wonderful opinions, yeah. And um, some maybe variants with the shinies. We're going to do stuff some shiny like stuff too, yep. I think. We're going to talk shiny Pokemon and our first shinies and which ones we've owned. It's always good to hear. And uh, then we're going to get into kind of the present and the future and what we would like to see for this year going forward for 20 years to celebrate Pokemon. Because let's be honest, none of us want to see just, you know, candle in the wind, small stuff. We want the big news. We want the big stuff. And the I think we're going to get it because there was recently just a little bit of a leak on Gen 7. But we're going to talk our opinions on the limited, limited information that you guys are probably totally aware of now because you've seen the Direct, but we haven't yet. So we're going to yeah. hypothesize and, go on. and see if uh, what we guess is, you know, living up to what actually happens. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be our podcast. And without further ado, uh, Brett, would you like, or Neon, would you like to, uh, it's all good. Names don't matter. No, Brett, I'm, I'm down for Brett for the podcast for sure. But would you like to start us off with your Pokemon origin story? My origin story. Um, it starts off way back when, when, uh, Pokemon Red came out. I was a wee little gaffer. Not, uh, not too old. I mean, I was born in 93. So do the math. I was probably just a few years old at this point. Yeah. Um, I don't actually know how I got the game, whether my dad just picked it up for me or I think he probably picked it up for my older brother and he just didn't like it and I kind of adopted it. But I played Pokemon Red for quite some time on my original Game Boy Color, the little Pikachu version of oh, it. Oh, nice, nice. Um, yeah, so, so so it was Color, not like... It was an Game Boy a Color, yeah. Okay, so then it, it, it might have even been a few years after it would have It, it would have been, because yeah. I was like, I was older. I was old enough to remember playing the game. And right, stuff like right, that. right. But um, I just don't remember the whole timeline and time frame. But moving on, because that's not fun. Um, I just played the game, and I remember just picking Charizard, because everyone wants the badass <laughs> dragon as a kid. Lizard. Lizard. He was a dragon as a child, though, okay? <laughs> he's He is a lizard on, though. I now have so much clarity into those 12-year-old comments on my video. There you go. But I'm, anyway, anyway, go on, sorry. Like heart. Um, yeah, I just, I, the game was ridiculously challenging for a little child of my young age, and um, I played it a lot and ended up finally beating the elite four at my cottage one summer with the help of a neighbor that's a couple years older than me i remember that grind to get past gary and defeat uh or get past um lance and defeat gary after that um the ultimate I, I surprise had to, i had to use rare candies to evolve to level up my pokemon to because i didn't have enough revives left over anymore I use a rare candy to bring them back. And they have like two HP for the final fight. 
just to get that last like little hit in and it ended up I don't know how I pulled through but I ended up taking him out and it was a great time after that I've played absolutely every generation before you um, get into those can I just were you one of those people because I never actually owned the original red blue and yellow like I played them on friends and stuff but I never owned them so I was never that guy who really like took advantage of the whole like missing no glitch and like, oh, yeah, I, 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 didn't, I had no idea about any of that stuff I used the rare candy duplication glitch for sure um, with my original. How did you know cartridge. about it though back then? The internet or oh, man, to be like honest, early I, internet. It's quite possible the same guy maybe showed me it. Um, he was like, as I said, he was a few years older and he was yeah. way into it, and he probably heard about it on like the, he was in like the playground and stuff like that, yep, right? Yep. So that would got passed around through the kids there. But I remember surfing down Cinnabar Island, the east coast of Cinnabar Island, yeah. up and down right along the line there, and that spawns the missing nose and. I think it was the item in your seventh slot in your inventory, whatever that was, would duplicate. And I remember I'd had like millions of rare candies. Yeah, like, it was a glitch. Is, this is after I beat the game. For mode. those of you who don't know what we're talking about, I think probably 99% do. But there's going to be the odd person who might be a little younger. Um, there was a glitch in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, I believe. I don't uh, think it was in Yellow. I think it still was. I Maybe. don't think they they patched it in time. But okay. I don't know. But, but um, either way, uh, it was just a glitch basically where like you could... Like uh, Neon said, by putting a certain item in a certain slot and like messing with some stuff, you right. could like over level Pokemon. You could literally catch like a Mewtwo depending on like what you made your trainer name. It was, it was pretty crazy. It, it was like the world of glitches. Yeah, um, there was like I, I remember, remember being scared of it as a kid. I remember personally. specifically encountering like level like, like I remember if like you ever ran into a missing no. You would run away. Yeah, because like, if, if you, you killed them, it caught could, like, it, or if you yeah, well, you could catch them and like they would just basically turn into like a level like 150. Sometimes it depended, like but they could mess up your game mm. a lot for some reason. I don't know the your entire cartridge makings of the thing, but uh, of like the coding in the game, but um, definitely I knew to avoid that. But, like, I remember seeing, like, there would be, like, Snorlax is, like, level 140-something, mm -hmm. and, like, they'd be using, like, Hydro Pump and stuff, and, like, you'd be fighting them, and it was, like, it was crazy, but um, it was interesting for sure. But the weird thing was, as soon as you caught them and leveled them up once, they would just revert back down to, like, level right. 100. Yeah. You could still level yeah. them up for some reason, too. Yeah. Um, so, like, the game still was, like, broken, but it, like, knew the proper coding, and it ended up, like, leveling itself out, so you couldn't have, like... A ridiculously overpowered like 180 Snorlax or something like that but well yeah it's it's um, a pretty glitchy it was a glitchy game for sure there, there were definitely some bugs in quickly, it but it, it was, wasn't quickly it was over time it was just they weren't working with a lot of assets right they, they weren't they it was like a, a team, team of yeah. right it was like six people i think yeah. if that like let's put it this way the guy who's now the director of pokemon was once like the composer of pokemon because yeah. like that's how close like how few people there were so yeah. um excuse me it's pretty crazy it's pretty crazy um Personally, I started off with uh, with Gen 2. Uh, that was my... my. It wasn't my first foray into Pokemon. I'd already obviously seen the show, and I'd already seen, uh, you know, like, like just everything. Like, I lived through Pokemon, you know, mania, like, yeah. um, before I even owned a game. So I had cards. I see the show. I, I saw the, the film in theaters on, like, opening night with my dad. Um, I also owned Pokemon Stadium for the N64. So, like, I was not without Pokemon. That was actually my so first... You owned Pokemon Stadium before you before owned... Before a core like series. And I, and gold. Right. And I remember cool. thinking... Because I didn't have a Game Boy. Because I was a firstborn child. So, I, I didn't... You know, my parents were very hesitant about spending money and stuff. And yeah. they still thought they could kind of get, get away with the whole... You know, like, let's buy him a $20 toy and he'll love that. Where, yeah. like, I started starting to grow into, like, I need this because all my friends have it. But anyway... Um, so I did have an N64, though. I got it for my sixth birthday. And then uh, the Christmas where I was seven, under the tree, I got a uh, copy of Pokemon Silver, um, which was amazing. It's like, it's still, to this day, like, probably my favorite Christmas gift I've ever received. Um, and thank God my parents were smart enough, because I'm pretty sure I told them. Remember how Pokemon Stadium came with, like, the backwards compatible pack? Yeah. I swear to God, I told them that, like, they didn't have to get me a Game Boy because I could play it on Pokemon Stadium through that thing. Through that. And that was total, because they, they made it so that you couldn't do that. It, it's not backwards compatible for that. I would have needed yellow, blue, or red to, to do that. So Or Pokemon Stadium 2, which hadn't come out stateside yet. So, um, thank God, they got me a Game Boy Color as well, a nice green Game Boy Color. And I played that game like crazy. Um, like, like, even years after, like, like right up until, I think, like, from... The year 2000 Christmas, so like all through 2001 and even some of 2002. Like I remember um, as the third generation was coming out, I, I actually like 
dove back in, and like I did a move through all that, and yeah. and like I met some people who uh, who like were still kind of like getting hyped in my grade for uh, Ruby and Sapphire, and so I as those games were like prepping to come out. I was now a little older. I was like 10 and I had some birthday money saved up. So I like bought myself Ruby and my brother Sapphire version. And, um, and so like, but, uh, leading up to that, I was like playing in the schoolyard, like Pokemon silver. And like, I was, uh, I was definitely big into that game. I, I don't know if it's the game I put the most hours into, but definitely the one that like shaped my portable gaming childhood for sure. Like yeah. no other game touched it, but yeah, then, uh, gen three came out. What's your experiences with gen three? Uh, Gen 3, I think, may have been... That was, like, when I was older, I guess, now. So Yeah, we would have been, like, 10, 11. Yeah, so a little more uh, intelligent when it comes to, like, how to play a game and stuff like that. So, like, I realized more about, like, type effectiveness and, right. like... And I'm, abilities. And, yeah, like, all that kind of stuff. So I think now I had a bit of, better of an understanding of how, like, the core Pokemon gaming worked. Um, once again, with the Firestarter, Blaze you can... Um, this is the first game where I ever had a legitimate level 100 Pokemon. Um, I believe I had a level 100 Flygon, Blaziken, and Groudon. And um, I had like I ended up trading with like my friends and stuff like that, and ended up getting a Marsh Tomp or like a Swampert and a Skeptile as well. And they were like right up there and had all the starters. And um, I played. I think I put the most hours into my file of Ruby. Yeah, um, no, I, it, it, it was an excellent game. I a lot game. of time in that. I like, I like Ruby a lot. That's very uh, very nostalgic for Pokemon Ruby. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, like, the region, if the region wasn't as boring, I, I watery, hate to say it. Watery, yeah, I know what you It's mean. not even watery. Like, just sometimes, like, I found like I found playing the remake very recently that the region kind of, it, just, it, it bogs really heavy in the middle. Like, it, it really, like, and a lot of Pokemon games do that when you get to that, like, right before you face off against like the the you know organization yeah they try of to that region. It yeah they they like really that. do yeah. and i don't i don't know like it just it hit me but i do agree that like that game's um intro and soundtrack and abilities and like adding all the extra rpg elements um and even the designs i, I honestly think um because the theme of that gen was like nature based everything was supposed to be natural like even in your legendaries that's reflected in the sense of like sky yeah. earth water yep um, I think it really came across in the designs, like just looking at anything from like, um, you know, Nuzleaf to looking at the, even the three starters, right? Like they're all very organic. They're all animal. They're like, they're like real right. animals, I guess. Like, right. Which I, mean, I personally ones. love. I, I think that's amazing. I, I would rather take uh, animalistic looking Pokemon over like the machine yeah, type I've ones any day. Yeah, i like the Kling Klangs or... Yeah. Uh, so I, I, yeah. I love that gen for the Pokemon and the theme, but the region itself is a little short. Um... And I also picked Blaziken, by the way. But uh, yeah. I actually corrupted that game accidentally using an action replay. Oh. Um, towards the end of it. Like, I put in so many hours. I forgot about action replay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I put in probably, like, again, like like you said, a lot. Uh, probably even more hours than Silver, but not as memorable hours. Um, I really, I tried to col uh, complete the Pokedex on that one. And I came pretty close, which is kind of scary. Like, I had a Jirachi and everything. Yeah. I, never, um, I don't think I've ever completed a Pokedex properly. I have, but I will get to that yeah. eventually. Um, but, I, yeah. I, I had, I remember on my original file, save file, before I got Pokemon Emerald. Um, my Ruby file, I had about, I had around 400 hours on my original cartridge file. I think I did 300, but yeah. I like, I spent the first probably 40, like beating the game. And then the last ones literally try like doing nothing with trying to complete the Pokedex. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I put a lot of hours into that and it still had that really cool sense of like playgroundness to it for me, at least. Like, um, I went to a babysitter and like all the kids there were kind of playing it. And there was one kid like across the street who was a little older and like, through him, I actually was able to get a Jirachi through, um, they did like an e-reader thing. And like, if you bought, I don't know if it was Coliseum or like, it was one of the GameCube games. You got, if you were lucky, you got like a card it for was, Jirachi. It was Coliseum, I believe. And so I managed to actually get a Jirachi through that, which was amazing. And he also had like the Eon ticket where he could like wonder trade it to me. And like, so I was able to get both Latios and Latias through my own game. It was like the first event I'd ever really encountered yeah. in Pokemon. And that was before I even like, I used an action replay and I met, and that's the thing. I was a kid and I couldn't even figure out how to use it properly. And all I ended up doing was like adding, like literally my first thing was like, I added all of these like rare candies and like started leveling up my Pokemon. And then I went to add something else and like it crashed the memory of the action replay. And I lost the ability to trade between 
Fire Red and Ruby. Uh oh. And so like it messed up, but like I couldn't even progress um in Fire Red after that because it screwed up uh, a specific type of thing. So I've never actually even beaten like Fire, Fire Red. Red. You never have it. Yeah. Well, I've beaten it, but I've never done all the post game stuff because like okay. the whole thing is like you can trade with Ruby and Sapphire after you get to like a. There's like a special a, a post game event where you have to get like an orb, like a blue orb and I a do, red orb I do or remember something. That. Yeah, from playing that. Game. And I like literally because I actually replayed it, it made it so that I couldn't actually get the red orb or okay. something. It was really bizarre. Um, messed up my whole game though. Kind of uh, soured the whole Pokemon experience for me after that. But I learned uh, cheaters never win, or at least cheaters with no information or intelligence never win. I mean, I use the action replay. Like, I think it has its time and its place to, like, if you're going to just use a million rare candies, then obviously... But I only did that because I couldn't figure out how to yeah. actually, like, spawn Pokemon and stuff. It, it was bizarre, but... I, I used it for, basically, I got myself a bunch of shiny variants and See, stuff I, like that. I, I wish I was smart enough to do that. Yeah. I, I didn't even know what shinies were, really, then. Um, I did, however, catch... Um, it wasn't even in my game, which is the worst part. I was playing my brother's game, um... Just, you know, going through and, like, beating the Elite Four and stuff, because I, I didn't want to erase my own game, but I, you know, anyway. So I was playing his game, and uh, I got just, like, off of, like, the route near Petalburg, and I was in the, the bushes or whatever, and I actually caught a shiny Wingle, but I didn't know it was a shiny Pokemon. I knew there was something special it about different. it. different. Because I knew there was green on it, but again, I wasn't, like... You know, on there was no Pokemon Reddit. I wasn't on Pokemon forums. I don't think Cerebi was um, even really around. I didn't even realize that Ash's... Like... Uh, Noctowl, Noctowl was shiny. Was shiny yeah. I didn't even realize that. I, I thought that the well, they never made it. Like, right. I thought it was just a different color in the game. Like, yeah. I didn't understand. Yeah. So, well, they did add a sparkle effect, but again, that was totally lost on me. And I knew about the red Gyarados, but I thought that that was just like a like a one off event kind yeah, of thing, like Lugia or Ho like, like, like an albino or something like that. Right. But like you just, I didn't, you just don't know. Yeah. Right? So I didn't know any better. Um, I probably killed at least one or two shinies in my silver That's, playthrough. I and guarantee. Didn't I, even know I guarantee it. I did that before I knew what a shiny was. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like there's no, there's no way. From them or, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And I didn't use repels, so like for sure it probably happened at yeah. some point. But um, <laughs> you, you, you and your repels, right? <laughs> yeah. Just, just figuring out how they work in your twenties. I literally just figured out <laughs> how repels work from like, like from a comment on a year uh, ago on the Pokemon Red review, right? Yeah. 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 No, no lie. I'd never use them because. I never wanted to, like, give up the chance to get a shiny. One. Like, okay, before yeah. I knew what shinies were, I was just too stupid to use repels. Like, I literally didn't even know what they were doing. I was yeah. not a big, like, a huge RPG gamer. Like, I, I wasn't, so I just didn't use repels. And then when I did know what shinies were, Gen 5 onward, I wanted to get a shiny. So I never used a repel in the odd chance that, like, the Swoobat that I encounter will be yeah. shiny. So, like... But anyway, um, yeah, so that was my first experience with a shiny, but didn't even realize it. Um, now, I guess going on to Gen 4, as I think I mentioned in my recent starter Pokemon video on the Random Tens channel, um, I was sort of in this, like, weird, like, like you know, by the time Gen 4 came out, we were, like, 13, 14. It really was not cool to be, you like... You weren't sure if, it, yeah, you were too cool for Pokemon or right, not, right? Right, right. Yeah. And it was, like, it's at that time in your life when, like, you just really, really want to grow up and you don't want to hold on to it. Like, it's so weird how, like, a few years after that, you start to get really nostalgic. But, yeah. like, at the time, you just wanted to grow up and be, like, responsible and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I kind of had this, like, very apathetic, um, more, you know, bittersweet uh, relationship with the Pokemon series. And uh, I played, my again, my brother, because he was three years younger. I He had a di he had Pokemon Diamond, and after he beat it, because he's the type of guy who, plays a game and then never plays it again so i picked up his copy and restarted the game and like played through diamond and i remember liking it but i definitely like do not the only time i ever went back to it was um when i needed to trade my gen 4 pokemon to gen 5 and you need to see all the pokemon in the deck so i quickly went back to it like after my initial playthrough yeah. to just to do that and luckily, I only needed to, like, see, like, two or three more, which is, like, great. Um, okay. Probably, again, because I never used repels. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but, yeah, so, like, it was really easy. I, I guess I must have caught, like, Mesprit and Nuxi and all that stuff. So yeah. so I was already pretty set up um, to do that. But, yeah, so that's really my only, like, experiences with, with uh, Gen 4. Uh, I recently played through Platinum, like, I'm talking within the past month. And I love it. I actually think Gen 4 is really really up there in in my favorite gens it's a really good game and the the post game is so lengthy and so like in depth it, it, it's really nice it's like a big juicy steak of like content um yeah. i like it i really like it and even like 
the organization, which is something. Sorry about the dog. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. He's gonna be racing and stuff. It must be the paper boy. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, Gen Four. It like the league in it, or the league, the organization in it is very, very, um, almost based in reality. Like they have a very Nazi esque. I plot to it. I don't remember much about Gen Four. It's what, worth revisiting. Who was there? Uh, who were the Cyrus? And Cyrus. it was Team Galactic. Oh, they wanted to basically create a new to, world, but like with Pocky and Diago, right? Yeah, yeah, Which yeah, like that's the science fictiony like fantasy element of Pokemon, but like the underlying theme of it all and like the parallels were were definitely like there's scenes straight up where like there's like a podium and like he makes every single like member dress the same and like look the same, yeah. and. He's, like, on this podium, and there's, like, flags draping behind him and, like, a microphone, and he's, like, raised above them, and he's, like, we need... And he gives, like, this speech about, like, superiority and, like... Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, yeah, it, it's very, very... Um, I, I love that about it. it. It's it's trying to kind of give out, like, a message and not just, like, 10-year-old stops, like, people who want to conquer the world. They do want to do that, but it was the first time I really felt there was, like... Well, I guess Ruby and Sapphire had elements of that too, actually. But I, liked, I really like the storyline in Ruby and Sapphire. It is actually like, good. Um, it's probably better I, than I gave it credit for. They're trying to take over the entire, like terraform the entire yeah. planet to one type. It's definitely creative. And it is yeah. more creative than Gen 4, but I think Gen 4, it feels scarier. Like, it's the first time I was actually like, man, this is kind they, of messed up. And like, yeah. they, they expanded on that in Gen 5. Gen which, 5. Is, which is where Gen we're going 5 next. Gen 5 is very good. But, yeah, no, I didn't even talk to a Gen 4 in my opinions, though. Um, I, how I feel about Gen 4 really is, I like the story as a, as a, with a quick reminder of myself of what it was. Um, but I did not like the Pokemon designs in it. I don't like the Legendaries. I don't like Palkia or Dialga. I just, I felt like they really looked weird. It's the same with, like, uh, Reshiram and Zekrom. I don't like their designs. I just don't like that, like, the giant, like, over-the-top designs of, like, <laughs> Not even that they're dragons. Like, I love dragons. I love Rayquaza, and, like, I love Groudon, and, like, Kyogre. They're, they're good designs, but um, it's when they, like, they just changed them and made them, like, look weirder. They just, like, gave them, like, details and, like, places that I felt are unnecessary. That's when, like, I felt like they almost started getting like, kind of a Digimon-type design to them. Right. In a little bit of a way, you know More what I mean? complex, like, not as simple. Yeah, they're, they weren't, like, the basic or I the simpler type, like Lugia or Ho-Ho. Well, or... I do think um, that, like... So Gen 1 was all about, like, science, basically, right? Like, that was the yep. theme. It was all about genetic engineering Genetics and all and, yeah. that stuff. And you can see that with Mew and Mewtwo and Ditto even being, like, the spawn of, like, failed Mews. It's, like, yeah. it's very cool. If you look for it, it's all about, like, yeah, like, literally, like, genetically engineered animals are Pokemon, basically. It's, yep. it's almost like there was a nuclear war and they started mutating and stuff. It, it's I very think, cool. I think that's where they wanted to take Pokemon Oh, for sure. I, I think so. Because, like, like the war. Stuff, speaking yeah. about the war and yeah. how electric Pokemon saved them and blah, yeah. blah, blah. No, I agree. I, I think that's they for definitely, sure. Uh, but then they it hit they... such a, like, pinnacle of pop culture that they had to make it kid-friendly like, forever, yeah, basically. For sure. Um, and, and then Gen 2 is very... Uh, in myth and like lore and like everything like in that has like a backstory related to like it, it's very neat natural as like well like, Gen 3, like but the Bellsboro yes. tower yeah exactly stuff, yeah. It's, it's very and like there's shrines in it and there's towers and prayers and yeah. like it's very much in that sense but it's still more like if it was in a religion it would be probably more like buddhist like it's very like spiritual and very like zen yeah. and i love it and i think the music is really really strong in it but um, and then three is yeah, nature. Three is nature, as you mentioned before. And then yeah. four becomes more about it's. It is more religious based. Like it's more about. Um, and I know it's like space and time and stuff too. But like at its core, it's more about like now we're dealing with deities, and it's about um, the pull between yeah. like religious. Like I don't know. It, it, it's very. It also obviously is like time and space and whatnot. But it, it's its overall theme. I think is definitely more like religion themed and like cults and like. Like it, it there it's very underlying. It's not like in your face, but I I kind of like that, and that's why like Palki and Dialga, I get it. Um, they I, work. Don't get me I wrong. I definitely get they it. Get, where they work, I just where it falls short for me though it starts to be in Gen Five because you start running out of this like main kind of theme to latch onto, and Gen Five is good. It's ideals and it's truths, which is great for a story, and I, we'll get into that like pretty much right now. But um. It's great for a story, but in terms of designing Pokemon, designing Pokemon around... Like, this is the first game where I really felt they decided to, like, design them more around the region itself and be, like, more New York and more, yeah. like, 
urban and like there's this more like gray and brown Pokemon. And don't get me wrong, I, like we'll talk about Gen Five, and I I love Gen Five, but like. Um, in terms of that theme working for the larger picture, I think it sort of just falls short because even like the only thing that makes the legendaries even close to, um, you know, truth and ideal is the fact that their color scheme is, is black, white, and gray. And like, I get yeah. it, but it's like almost like beat you in the head symbolism as opposed to like ho and Lugia, which is like, they created these backstories. Mewtwo, they created, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's not a real just, backstory. Like, they're to, not just like a great deity that's right. existing right like, they were there for they're there for a reason right yeah Rather like than, it's it's more like know. they're spiritual and which is great but like i just i never felt that presence that i really got from even you know kyogre ground on rayquaza like they're these like you said like, like that they're like gods first, that moment in like I, I go to gen 3 again because like that was like when i was older and i guess i could like feel the power like more from them or mm-hmm. whatever but like that first moment when you like encounter Groudon or kyogre they like I don't know, like, it was something special when, like, the first time you see them and you're just like, oh, crap, this thing's, like, yeah, well, this is and, dangerous. Like, and that was the first time, barring kind of Crystal, that, like, they actually set up an event with the Legendaries where, like, you would, ca- like, because even Gen 2, it's like, you have to go out of your way to capture Lugio and Ho-Oh. It's, it's yeah, more like a side quest. They aren't in the front of the game, right? right? So Which I think, like, the, it made it more cinematic, for and, sure. And, like, Gen 1 didn't even really have it like, no they had Mewtwo, who just which was, was cool that, that's still probably one of my favorite afterwards. side stories of all time well, I, I always but... remember sitting like seeing that guy that was blocking the cave yeah. door <laughs> fun fact like because like the guy's hair was black and like the entrances to the caves were like semicircles yep. kind of it always looked like that guy had like a royal guard hat <laughs> on and that's what i thought he was i thought he was just like a royal guard oh, standing there. okay <laughs> like if you can picture <laughs> what i mean right yeah, I mean, yeah they have like yeah. those big tall hats I couldn't tell that it was a cave behind him, so I always talk with him, and he'd just, like, say something, like... <laughs> but didn't you, you ever talk with him after the Elite Four, or did well, you just he, shut it he off? Di- he disappears. Right, right. He, he's not even there anymore. Right. And then I'm like, oh, it was a cave this whole time. <laughs> like, I could go in there. Did you go in and see Mewtwo? Oh, I went in there. I got Mewtwo. Oh, wow. I, uh, That's intense for, like, a young, like, like five or six-year-old, like... Yeah. For I, sure. I just, like, I don't even know. Like, I remember Seafoam uh, Islands to get Articuno. That was, like... That was the hardest thing. Yeah. Seafoam Islands Whirlpool, are, well, are a real maze there. It's not Whirlpools yet. Like, Lugia would kind of take the Seafoam Islands idea and make it even, like, stupider, but... but you had to, um... There's, like, currents, You right? had to use the rocks and use strength yeah. and push the rocks yeah, through yeah. the right holes yeah. to block the currents. And, like, honestly, without, like, n- being smarter than a six-year-old or, like, a seven-year-old, you have to... Yeah, you use ha- a guide? You have to use a guide yeah. or, like, just get blatantly lucky and i think that's what it was well even but like lugia is like that like they don't use the strength thing but like there's four or five islands or something and then you have to like find you have there's only one that you could even enter from but then i think you need waterfall you need whirlpool you need surf obviously um and you have you have to use like strength and and flash and like so you need like at least two hm slaves yeah um go in and like he he's a bugger to find like i just played through crystal for my review back in December, and yeah, you definitely played it more recently than I have. He is—he's a pain to get. Hoo can be, but it's not even close to Lugia. Like Lugia, yeah. I was just trying to do it without even using a guide, and like, I literally picked the like that the cave that I needed last. Like, I didn't use oh, a guide, yeah. but I literally like of all the caves I could have picked, I used the one that I needed to use at the like it, yeah. anyway. But yeah, so we're kind of going back now, but... Yeah, we should um, move up to Gen 5. So Gen 5, I'm going to let you kind of take this one, because I remember you in... Because I knew you now. This is the first Gen that I actually knew you in. Was this when I bought it at EB Games? Yeah, like you was, went on uh, lunch or something to get it, like, first day, I'm pretty sure, right? I With Kyle. It. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. That's, that's, that was the uh, that was the old joke. Oh, uh, just Pokemon today, huh? <laughs> and, like, this is, like, we were older now. We were, like, what? Well, we, we were, were probably, in high we school, were, like, we almost 16, seniors. 16, I think, 17. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, yeah, I went and bought Pokemon, and uh, I was with my friend, and I'm like, I was kind of ashamed of myself, but I'm like, you know what, it's Pokemon, I'm like, at the same time, I'm kind of embracing my inner It was the love. start of it, it was the start of that seed of like, I'm just not going to care about like, what people think, yeah, and just know. like, but, but it was like, it was still the part where like, like, you felt a little bit ashamed of getting it. I didn't care, but like, the fact that this guy was like, oh, just getting Pokemon today, I'm like, <laughs> uh, dang, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, and Pokemon in, in itself still culturally was still this very, like, it hadn't quite got to that nostalgic place yet. It was still, it started to, and nah, there were people like, like a generation ahead of us who were starting to like hit it. It's like only 12 years old at this time, or Pokemon, or, well, no, uh, no, it was, it was before 14. Yeah, yeah, but. Yeah, about 14 or 15 years old. But, so I remember, like, I actually held off. I think it was the, 
the first game that I played like years after it actually like when I finally played black and what what white version is the one I ended up I did I wanted black version and I actually just the only one they had but anyway yeah um what happened is I got my 3ds in 2011 and uh, I couldn't get Ocarina of Time 3D because it was sold out everywhere. I could have just gone online, but I wasn't yeah. in that kind of place yet. And um, so I just grabbed a DS game because I knew 3DSs could play DS games. And I never owned a DS. My brother did, but yeah. I never did. And he lost his. So, But anyway, so I picked it up with my 3DS because I was like, I need something to play, even if it's not going to be what I really want. And I'll wait for... Um, Ocarina of Time remake to yep. hit shelves again, and then I'll play that. Restocked. So, oh. I mean, excuse me, but yeah, you have um, you have way more like, I guess, stories with that game than like I wouldn't really get them until later. I don't have a whole ton of stories with the game. Like I, I played through it when I was like any shinies. By the way, I in between third generation to sixth, I didn't catch a single shiny. I think I'm still on your part. I don't have any real shinies that I'm pretty sure I just encountered my first real shiny. Like in my uh, replay through of uh, Omega Ruby, um, that's when I encountered my first ever wild shiny that I wasn't um, hunting hunting or... for. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, still no shinies, but I really, really, really loved the Pokemon in Gen Five. I hated the uh, I hated the starters though. Not a big fan of the starters in Gen Five. I went with um, a water starter. Yep. Because I hated Embor so much. I like Tepig. And I think they could right. have gone in the right places with him if they made him like still more of like a four legged boar type person, right? Like and just like, like Ganondorf, but with yeah, fire. Just, like literally, they like, <laughs> made him like a fire Ganon. And I think that would have been so cool. Yeah, but, uh, they just took him in the wrong direction with that. Um, I know you love Snivy. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I, I, I when I finally picked it up, like I said, like a few years later, I really liked Snivy, but I did not like. Uh, that's what a lot of people say. Like, and yeah. for me, I don't like. I think Superior is almost as good, but like Snivy definitely has more personality. He's got the personality right. to him, and I feel like with Superior, just like it, I get, I think it. they tried. I to, like it though. I, I, I think that's what they. Big... Try, I think they tried to like show. That like oh he's like a it was like, too cool and like superior right. is like the like elegant like it was like form. royalty yeah it was it was kind of like that yeah it's like Dragonair's line but in reverse it like starts with like the really kind of goofy and yeah. then it gets more and more like regal yeah. in, but like Dragonair's the the reverse right where it's <laughs> yeah. like it goes like regal to just like what is that but yeah no for sure I just I didn't like that too much. But, uh, I even picked uh, Snivy again in my Black 2 playthrough, yeah. like when the sequel games came out. I never, I never got the sequel games. Right, well, like I was going to say, like by the time I actually picked up Black and White, like literally within the year, the sequel came out. So I was yeah. like, I was still like, had memories of the first game. I was like, that was a really good game. I'm going to get the sequel. And like, yeah. I did really like what they did with, um, if you had a save file of Black or White on your 3DS, there was like a system memory thing you could access and Black 2 would actually pick up the story using your old character's name. That's and pretty good. It was really cool. And like you get, you got extra like cutscenes if you did it or not. It's still a good game on its own. But um, with that, it it actually felt like a continuation of the story. I think I do have Black and White 2 actually. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think I, I think I do now that I'm thinking of it. But it's really cool just... when, you do, when you access that. And like the yeah. only shame is that you cannot fight you from the first game, which would have been the ultimate like yes moment. That'd when like cool. it would have like, been like if red it, and, if it like red. saved your Pokemon that you had. When yeah, you, like transferred. The yeah, file and over. it can. It, I, and I know it can because it did so many other things that were equally as cool as that. That like yeah. it could have, but they just didn't go that extra mile, which is kind of sad. But um, no, but yeah, can't be choosers. <laughs> so Gen Five, I will actually say though, um, straight up here that like Gen Five is my favorite Gen of all time. Yeah, it's it's the gen that like got me back into it. I, like I the loved designs, experiencing I like the story. it. Yeah, and like yeah. I loved experiencing it for the first time um, with all brand new Pokemon. Like I had to make a brand new team. It that let was, me bond with the new Pokemon instead it, of relying they... on because like I just replayed through Platinum and immediately like yes I had you know I caught a Shinx and I caught like I had my starter obviously, um, but like immediately you start kind of falling into that like. Oh, well, like, I know this Pokemon's good. Like, oh, I can catch, like, a Haunter here? Well, I know Gengar's awesome, so, like, yeah. maybe I should just get Gengar and, like, get more, you know, type coverage than settle for, you know, whatever the that version of Gengar is in that game. Or, like, if you can get one earlier, like... So, yeah, I really loved Gen 5 for that, and I love the story. It was mysterious, I thought, Gen 5 was, for I sure. I thought it was the first time since, like, Gen 1, really, where, like the story took like a really more mature 
approach. Like there were elements of maturity and stuff in um, Gen I Four. I think there were surprises in it too, like with like and yeah. like and and Getsis and, like, is you just didn't expect him under leveled to... uh, high high dredgeon or whatever. Over leveled, you mean? It's under leveled. It's, it's underleveled? like it shouldn't be able to have been evolved at the level that oh, it's at. Oh, yeah, yeah never it's mind kind it. of like a glitch. I, I still remember it just being ridiculous yeah. and strong, though. And I don't really like and his um his seismitoad. That thing always yeah, messed me up. Yeah, it's it was, good Pokemon. I don't know why if it was like the typing order. It is. Like, yeah, it, it's like the Quagsire of Gen Five, but, yeah, but like even it was like it was stronger. Like my team that I had going mm-hmm. up against him, it's like the order that I would use to like swap them out and like right. the super effective typings. It always, his last two was uh, his Seismitoad, and then into his Hydreigon. And, like, by then a couple of my other guys were knocked out that would probably be able mm-hmm. to take them out. And, like, that was, but, like, a, that was a tough fight. But that's another reason why, like, I loved that game, is because it gave, like, almost... Your rivals were kind of bad, honestly, like Sharon and Bianca. Yeah, there's nothing too special about them. But it gave you that, like, um, like N and uh, Getsis, specifically. Like, there are Pokemon that, like, I only associate with them, right? Yeah. Like, like I will forever, and this is just because based on my playthrough, but I will ev- for like for always associate Silver version and Silver, like your rival in that game, with for Alligator because I pick Cyndaquil, right? So like, yeah. I'll always like that's his Pokemon, and like for N and gets this, like N is always gonna be like Zorua Zorark because like you couldn't actually catch that Pokemon in that game. Yeah, that's true. So like he was the only one who had it. And uh, Getsis is the hy- hydrogen, or I guess even for you is like seismitoad. Like you'll always, I always think. I, I think of both of them. And yeah. like they did that in Gen Six too with Lysander because like he's Pyroar. Yeah, everyone basically. else has the uh, female version. Right, of it, and, and he, he has the so male like they do that to like make. And I think that's cool it's because it's smart. like Ash very and smart. Pikachu, yep. right? Or like Red and Pikachu, or Gary and like Blastoise, or like you. It's yeah. this certain like this person is associated with this Pokemon. It's like their Pokemon, right? It's like Brock and Onyx. I can't. See an Onyx without thinking of Brock. Yeah. Right? So, like, I love how they did that in, in that show. Or, in that show. In, in that, that game. game. Yeah, it was and good. So, yeah, Gen 5 is probably my favorite. Uh, even though the legendaries are okay. I really actually do like Zekrom and Reshiram. But I like them more than Gen 4's legendaries. But not as much as the other Gens. Um, yeah. But, again, that's just probably also I, nostalgia. I, I, yeah, I still just have to say, though, with, like the, uh, with Gen 5, the best thing they did was getting rid of all of the old Pokemon. Yeah, like they, it's so cool. Where they made it so every Pokemon was new and they came up with a complete new slate of it. Even if, like, I, not all of them are good. I came up... I used things that I never would have thought I'd use. I used, like... I used Sock. <laughs> um, and like, he ended up being, like, one of my main guys I had. Yeah. Um, and uh, Archeops. Archeops yeah. is my all-time favorite Pokemon. I guess we should, like... We, yeah, well, I'll hang on to that anyways because we're going to talk about that after. Yeah. We actually uh, got to... We, we got to start moving a little quicker here, too. Yeah, we're, we're babbling on <laughs> about... But, all okay, all right. But yes, yeah. we will get into that. But uh, so Gen Six. So Gen I, we six? actually bought Gen Six together. Like we, we went we together to is, get Gen Six, and you got full Y. Fruition of it. I got Gen Y, or well, yeah, <laughs> Type Y. <laughs> you got uh, the X, and uh, yeah, we played. I think we played through it together. We started up our files For at the sure. exact same time yeah. in my basement. Yeah, and we kind of finished together too, and then did, started our second playthroughs at the same time. We did time. our tra- we did our trades right. Yeah, so we could have. Uh, we could keep the we Pokemon, keep our like guys, the main people our from guys. our team. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So like that was again like that was really the first time since Gen three for me at least that like I had someone else who was, I was kind of like playing with and like comparing with and like that made the fun of Gen six again. Yeah. I will admit Gen six is a very rushed and flawed game, especially in its story and its like le- it like the organization. It, yes, it left you wanting much more. Much more. The post game is abysmal. Um, there are so many things like what was up with that like hidden hidden statue or whatever you can get from the guy from the region that we don't like there's yeah, so many little the, things uh, the, in it that power plant and stuff that's too. just shut like, down like we we're i remember we were always talking we're like oh the dlc that they could have for right. it would be great like we were so excited for it and then they just flopped they left the gave nothing yeah and like at like, some point one lady talks about a heat more yeah in like the town square runs the like it's yeah so there's so many things yeah and like the ghost girl in like uh yeah, they, so, they had a lot of potential with the generation, and they let it... Uh, and Megas, for me, I fine. love the concept of Mega Evolution. I don't. <laughs> I don't like them in competitive. I think that, like, it's ruined. Like, I... If anybody ever, like, if I'm on my wireless or whatever, yeah. and someone, like, is like, oh, Brandon wants to battle you. I'm always like, no. Because Brandon is going to use a Mega Charizard Y or a, a Mewtwo Mega X. Or, and, and I'm sitting there yeah. trying to hatch eggs, and, like, it, like there, I have no chance. Because, like, unless you, like, go into it with... Building your team. Hey guys, we're back. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry about that. I'm getting a sub. 
Anyway, um, but yeah, so Gen 6, it as we were just talking about, it had its problems, but... Um, it also was very enjoyable at the same I time. I loved it. I love how, like, I felt like Gen... Five was very, like I said, very rustic, very gray, and like, and that makes sense because like they were going for America and they were going for like, yeah. you know, America is more polluted than Japan. We've been to Japan, like, th- they don't litter in Japan, like no. they don't like, and but so then when they took it to France or AKA Kalos region, yeah, it's very beautiful. Like everything, ha- it's shiny. It's, it feels new. It's white. It, it was really nice, and I mean was... white by like like pure, not white, but like. Anyway. Yeah, I know what you mean. No, yeah, yeah, it's the gen was like it looked it looked really nice and like on the three D clean, it was, like just clean. It was very like colorful. The, yeah, the colors were bright. It's three D as well, even yeah. though it didn't really affect gameplay. Like, let's be honest. No, it didn't. Not it's still the exact same game. You like, but just all there was no more sprites. It was right three D models, right. and they were really nice. Yeah. Um, I do think though, like. Again, you can tell it's rushed because, like, when you get in, like, a horde battle or when you get even just in some regular battles, uh, the 3D just won't work. Like, it stutters because, yeah. like, it cannot handle it. And I think that's a result I of them making playing. it... There you go. I was just going to say, I think that's a result of them making it... Um, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they, they localized it for the world. Like, they wanted to make sure... Because the for whole sure. theme was, like, unity and like life and death and so they wanted to make sure everybody got it at the same time which i love that they did that but i didn't like that it set them back and i think that uh and we'll get into this with the whole gen 7 thing but whatever comes next is going to be is going to benefit so much more similarly to how five benefited from four because they had the technology they had the engine already yeah. created all they had to do was fix the things that like were lacking or like balance things and like that's why i love gen 5 it's like yeah it's the only time that they've ever not worked on a new system like it's the only because even like you know going from the game boy to the game boy color like that's a huge leap right yep, and like sure. so this will allow them to polish it as long as it's for the 3ds which i'm really excited for because like they have three years and all the assets already built. Like they have three dimensional Pokemon be, rendered. Gen seven should be big. It should be good. It should be very good. Yeah. But um, yeah, so Gen six. Also, I should mention, as I said earlier, I actually completed the Gen six Pokedex, the National Dex, seven hundred eighteen. Yep. Um, uh, I think there's actually more than seven hundred. Is it seven hundred eighteen complete with Volcanion and all them? Or? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think it. I can't remember the exact numbers. Because I will say, I I didn't get Volcanion. And I didn't get Hoopa. But every other Pokemon I, I caught in that game, every other, like Deoxys, uh, Jirachi, Mew, Celebi, like all of that stuff. You had the um, full decks. Yeah, like I, I got the little completion certificate in game you get and yeah. all that fun stuff. So, it, it no, it was, um, I put a lot of time. The reason I did that is because that was the first game where I was very much of the shiny hunter mind. Yeah. And like, I think I have over... 30 shinies in that game um yeah i used the fishing method that's where i got my first ever shiny i believe yeah that i caught in the wild i used the friend safari at first and i caught like some of my favorites like uh, shiny helioptile the yeah. red one which was crazy because i literally caught a shiny manectric yeah. and then for some reason i was like you know what i'm just gonna go for a little more and within like 30 go arounds i caught the shiny helioptile which is the cool. one i was searching for yeah um so it was really cool that i like and yeah so that's one of my favorite shinies of all time um and, uh, yeah, but then I wanted to actually breed, like, high-level, like, powerful shinies. You we're breeding a lot, yeah. I was breeding a lot. Um, so my, I created a five to six, like, perfect, I, or as, as almost perfect as you can get, like, in each category. Um, like, we're talking, like, 31 IV Pokemon. Yeah. Um, and I got a Talonflame, a, uh... Not Fortress. Why do I always want to say Fortress? Ferrothorn. Uh, Ferrothorn. Yep. Um, uh, Talonflame, Ferrothorn, Gengar, uh, Bisharp. Bisharp. It, which is so cool. It's like got the blue and the yellow in it. Yeah, looks good. Um, and, oh my god, I can't believe it. Oh, um, Routes has evolved from Gardevoir. Yeah. Uh, and I put a Megastone on Gardevoir. And my team was going to complete with a, hopefully, a uh, shiny Greninja. But I never got around to it, so what do yeah. you do? But um, I hatched like a thousand eggs for that Greninja, and I never got it, so I just kind of gave up. But I had the shiny charm working this in my is, favor. This is back when you started editing, because I remember you said you were just, while you were just yeah. like, waiting for videos to like render and stuff and render. Yeah. I would literally just circle would around just Lumios. Be, you would just be hatching eggs. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, like even like on my, I think it was 21st 
birthday, which sounds really lame, but like that night I hatched my shiny uh, Talonflame or whatever. Not Talonflame, but the, you know. Yeah. I gotta, re- I gotta replay Gen 6 now that I'm talking about this. I definitely want to replay it's it. It's good, but, like, the post-game is so lacking. Yeah, I bet it takes, like, not that long. Which is but but like, I do love it. Like I And yeah. that's the thing. Like, I, by far, have more time because of those egg-hatching things yeah. into Gen 6 than any other Pokemon game. But not for, like, good reasons, exactly. Like, it's because I completed the decks. It's because I, you know, hatched those shinies and, like, it took forever yeah. doing each one. Um, so, like, that's the reason where, like, Gen 3 and 2 are definitely more impactful in terms of, like, the time I spent. So, like, if I put 600 hours into Gen 6, only probably 200 of those are, like, very meaningful, where, like, if I put 300 hours into Gen 3, all 300 were pretty, like, yep. you know, memorable, at least. For um, sure. Or more of those 300. Anyway. Um, but, yeah, so that is that. Um, Move on to favorite designs. And- yeah. I mean, like, I don't, I don't have a whole ton of favorite designs that stand out. I like a lot of... A lot of Gen 5. Um, favorite of all time is Archaeops. I don't know why, anything about it specifically. Just that, It's like, like his, Toucan Sam, but I like went his, crazy. I love his colors and his angry teeth, and that he's like in a flying pose and stuff like that, too. He's really cool. Um, I love Flygon a lot. Flygon is, oh, Flygon is, is good, I will admit. Just with his big goggles that he wears and stuff like that. Shiny Flygon, too, is very nice looking. Yeah. It's very good um, shiny. I mean... There's not a whole lot. Who's your favorite thing. legendary? Do you think in My terms of design or just like whatever? Uh, I think Zapdos. Yeah, it's Zapdos like, is cool. I mean, like Zapdos is just so. He was like he carried me through with my Charizard in yeah. uh, my original Red playthrough. So he's always got his little special place in my heart, and a, I mean, it's like a, a badass Thunderbird. Yeah, yeah, I like it a lot. Um, I mean, none of the legendary dogs always really stuck out to me. Um, like Oxy and Mesprit, they were nothing special. No, they're. I think like them and they the Reggies are some of the like. Mo- they're yeah. not even uninspired. They're just not for me. Like they're very. Yeah, the Reggies weren't anything great. Um. Yeah, nothing really special. Oh, I love uh, Noivern. Noivern's cool. Uh, from Gen Six. He, You're he's a big great. fan of Malamar too, right? Ma- yeah, Malamar. I have a really powerful Malamar. Um. He's and like, Tyrantrum. Tyrantrum. <laughs> yeah, my Tyrantrum. Rest in peace. <laughs> Um, I released a level, like, 90 Tyrantrum onto the Wonder Trade because I <laughs> lost a beer pong game with Dan or something, or Stan, and, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a good time. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. But I did it, and it happened, and someone got very lucky. I got a Zigzagoon in return. Um, <laughs> which is awesome. It's not just, even a Gen 6. No, like... a freaking Zigzagoon, like, level 5 or something like that. Oh, Some, great. Someone had the best day of their life there. It could have been worse. It could have been a Luminion. Oh my god. You would have been like, what is this Pokemon? What even what, is this? This, this, this? this isn't even real. This, this doesn't exist. What is this Digimon? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, I, I um, definitely, like, I, I think our tastes are very, like, they're almost complete opposites, which is cool that, like, we can enjoy Pokemon, but, like, for completely different reasons. Like, for me, yeah. I'm definitely, like, obviously, I, I really enjoy the Evolution line. Um, yeah. I think there's very, like, there's... I don't think there's any bad ones. Personally, Sylveon's not for me. I think it's a little too much going on. Yeah. Um, but I think they're all pretty memorable. And, like, I, I think Glaze... Like, I don't know why they went ice right at, like, with water. I, I think it could have been rock or flying or something better than... But whatever. Um, but for the most part, I love them. Umbreon's, like, my favorite Pokemon of all time, which pretty much anyone who's listening to this knows. Um, but, yeah, I, I really like Bisharp. Obviously, even when it's not shiny, it's really cool. Um, I really love uh, Piloswine. Just kidding. I don't actually really like Mamoswine. <laughs> it's okay, but... It's... Ma- Mamoswine's sweet. Mamoswine's I, right. I really like Mamoswine. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, Scizor is so cool. I like even, like, ones like Ladyba. I really like Lady Ladyba. Is it Ladyba or Lady N? Ladyba. Well, there's Ladyba and What's Lady the evolved N. one? Lady N. I can't even remember, and I just like, played Crystal. It's bad. Yeah, Lady um, N is the... Evolved. I actually like that design, though. Like, that's one I, I replayed through, and I was like... I, I don't think I put it in my list of, like... Memorable ones, maybe yeah. I did, but I, I can't even remember. I'm the same my own way breakfast. with uh, Leave Annie. Yeah, if you remember Leave Annie? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's kind of like a. Oh, like but a, you gotta be careful. It, it, oh no, never mind. It's like mind. a praying mantis kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah. like female praying mantis type. It looks really nice. I always like. I like Pokemon that crit. I yeah, always like, yeah. So like it Manky? used Leaf Blade and stuff like that. That's why I use my uh, Malamar. I really, uh, I really liked him because he basically every one, he all four of his moves I think have like a special crit, and then I use the. Yeah. Uh, What's the whole item that, like, doubles your crit chance or whatever as well? 
Oh, I can't even remember, but yeah. it does a I, sure you, hit or dire hit or dire something. Dire hit, I think it is. Or, I don't know. That's that's a uh, thing. Anyways, I use him in the competitive play, and like it throws a lot of people a big loop on him because like they try mm-hmm. to like, drop his stats, and like his like his like ability makes that like yeah. more powerful, and yeah. uh, he, no, like, yeah, he crits a lot, and he gets really really strong, and it really messes with a lot of people. And his typing is really good too. Mm-hmm. Um, I like his design, and I liked his him for actual like yeah. I find that I find I'm like as I get older, I'm really drawn to more like grass and bug types. Like I really like a Selgor. I really like Scolipede. Selgor's cool. Yeah. I really like uh, Torterra. Um, like Torterra's so cool, so so cool. Um, but I'll shut up about Torterra. <laughs> um, but even like even like the Bulbasaur line has really grown on me since like I was, like as a kid I was like Bulbasaur's yeah, I cool. Wanna, I don't have pink flower. But like even on. Venusaur, like I I really enjoy Venus like that whole line Venusaur's and like Bayleaf and Meganium like. I find, like, yeah, as I grow older, that... I mean, like, Gen 6 is my first gen where I ever started with a grass type. I used, right, uh, yeah, you used Chespin. Chespin, yeah. Chespin. I, I won on that one. I got Froki. Yeah, I, uh... I'll definitely... I'm gonna start with a fire type in the next my next playthrough. I might. Six. It's been a while since... It's been, like, I haven't started with a fire since Gen 4, so... Yeah, yeah I, I might... It depends, but honestly, it depends. I'm, I'm, I've am I'm learned not to base it on... I just go with my gut. Like, when I see the three, I just kind of... All right, hands down, favorite shiny. Hands down, I mean Umbreon, but that's for like. And we've already, yeah, seen your videos. So. And I just kind of named all the like the ones that I made my <laughs> team on are pretty much my favorites. Um, yeah. And I also have the video. Like I really like um, Amora is such a cool, cool shiny. Like with the white and the light blue and the col- but, like the colors. I think it's just so much cooler than it's regular because like that white it just makes it seem like angelic almost, which is which is cool. Um, yeah. Also, I want to talk about designs really quick. My favorite, I think honestly, my favorite. Legendary is Celebi. Celebi? But okay. in terms of design, it's actually Xerneas. Like, I think Xerneas is so cool, okay. and it's probably because... Xerneas does look really good. I'll give it that. Yeah. Uh, like, Princess Mononoke like is one of my favorite. Oh, yeah. And it's like it's got, like, this four spirit kind of design to I it. I still have your movie, by the way. No, you don't. <laughs> I do. Not that one. Princess Mononoke. Do you? Yeah. Oh, anyway. Um, <laughs> I still have it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, so I really like that. But yeah, uh, you're shiny. Sorry. My yeah, shiny. Oh gosh. Um, well, you caught. Talk about the shinies you've caught. Yeah. So um, I can't even remember their name. What was the first one? Uh, I know you caught a ch- shiny Pikachu. A shiny Pikachu. I did. Yeah. And yeah. You, oh, was that one in the wild? I think that was in the wild in Gen Six. Yeah, it was. Maybe that was my first one I ever caught. I think then. it was because you like. I remember you texted me and like sent me. By the way, my brother is like the shiny killer. He's killed <laughs> like he's killed like three shiny every generation. Like you gotta understand. I probably put collectively like. 1500 to 2000 hours into like main core pokemon games he's probably put in a hundred like total like yeah. and he's he owned gen 3 4 and I 6 you, you so like me that. Yeah. and he has killed i kid you not he's killed a shiny like quillfish or whatever which would have been a sick because that evolves into a uh Does, quillfish doesn't evolve which one's carvana sorry oh like carvana into, uh, Sharpedo, Sharpedo. which would have been sick it's like purple i think but yeah um, he killed that. Uh, he killed a Starly in Gen Six in a horde, and like he, but he I, knew I, I, it. He you, knew you it was, showed me that. You showed me because it registered of it, it on you, the Pokedex. You had it, and you like showed me the picture of it, and then you like sent me like a picture like right after. He's like, he killed it. Yeah, he killed it. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, oh, yeah, no. he's like the shiny killer, and like yeah. again. He didn't even com- he didn't even beat the elite four in Gen six like he literally he and I kid you not he got to the champion turned it off and has never picked it up again. Jesus. He had one more battle and he would have beat the game and he yeah. didn't. Um. But yeah, and he saw a shiny just randomly in that game without friend safaris or anything like. Yeah. No, that's I Pikachu. I completely forgot about that. Um, that just shows you how long I've played my Gen six for. Um, yeah. I'm definitely gonna get back and play that sometime. Um, and then I was as I said I was replaying through my uh, Omega Ruby. And I caught a um, sw- what's the bird in that swallow? Swallow, swallow? like I the first so. form of tailow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tailow, a random shiny tailow. Is it green? It's green. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's got a green base to it, like a dark, dark green. Yeah. Um, looks really nice actually. I like it quite a bit, and uh, he has good stats too. I remember. Um, so he picked up on my team. That was like it's always surprising to catch him in the wild. Yeah, um, I mean, I've I've literally not since my my brother's game where I caught him a shiny wingle accidentally. Yeah. I've still yet to run into one in the wild without looking for it. Yeah. I've gotten an egg by complete accident. You've got the eggs. I did the fishing method. But even, but even like I literally, while I was completing my Pokedex, I just put an egg in the daycare with like a ditto. 
And you got and it. I got a shiny air on, like one yeah, egg, yeah. one egg, one and done, and like it had the red eye. It was really, it's crazy. Which, yeah, it, it's it's like the feeling of running into like a wild shiny. It honestly it, is because I was like, holy like, crap! Out of like an egg, that, that, I've never had one out of an egg. So, so yeah, it's, it's pretty rare. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, but yeah, so those are kind of favorite shinies and shiny experiences. Okay, so what we hope to see for the twenty years and the anniversary, this is this is big because there was actually some leaked stuff going on today. Yeah, right. we, we've mentioned Gen 7 a few times. Um, but not the names. Not the names, and uh, we do know the names because they were leaked within 24 hours. And from... we should be able to say it because it should be... Should be released, hopefully. Yeah, public news We're expecting now. From tom- the news from tomorrow. I mean, it's only five or... minutes, but I think they're going to use yesterday. the last 30 seconds to do a teaser trailer with the logo and stuff. Yeah. I don't, I don't think don't, we're getting a full I trailer. I, they, I don't think they'll show any Pokemon from it. I don't think they'll show much. We um, might get starters, but I really do think it's going to be starters, Pikachu. If we get starters, I'll be really excited. But... I think it's going to be Pikachu. And it's going to be like, thank you for 20 years. And then like a well, quick like snippet of okay, footage. So we'll just say right now, if um, you do not know what Gen 7 is right now, this is spoilers. Yeah. So stop right now. Go look it up. Because or don't. they are called Sun and Moon. Yes. Um, yeah. That is the names of the two respective games. Which, interesting. I like them. I think there's a lot of good elements to it. I are, The first thing I read on the internet was a guy saying that, like, guarantee that the two, like, the two, like, teams or whatever that are in the game, they're probably going to be trying to, like, make it eternally daytime or eternally nighttime. Yeah. And, like, I think that'd be really cool. And it could have some, like cool maybe like some like wind or uh, not wind uh majora's mask elements or something maybe with like mm-hmm. a timeline or something like that where like it'll actually be like i hope they really focus on like the night and daytime more which, yeah i mean with the titles of that you'd think they it, will they definitely should so yeah and like what it like maybe they'll even like some do more, space like, stuff with like in sense of like because yeah. spoilers again if you've played the post game of omega ruby and alpha you Sapphire, fly around <laughs> you go to space like you like yeah. you legitimately go to space so like yeah. it's not impossible that the, like the post game might be on the moon like some james bond austin powers type like it's possible like who knows um i think it could be really cool i would love it if one of the games like let's say uh, sun takes place like a thousand years in the past or like prehistoric times yeah. and moon takes place like in the like, you know, flying car kind of future. Yeah, I don't think that'll happen. I would but love I think it. That'd though. be really cool. That would be amazing, and you can trade between times, kind of like um, they did a, a, a kind of something like that in Black and White too. There was like this one area where that is in true. one game it was like it's very like forest, modern and, and it's forest, the yeah, and then yeah. yeah, the other it was like very robust and city esque. Yeah, yeah. And like, if they did that for like both games, that would be amazing. And like in one, and like almost make it so that in one, like your Pokemon. So, like, if Moon is, like, the future one, your Pokemon are more robotic and more, like, for the people who like those types of, like, machinery designs and, like, the new, like, Magina or whatever Pokemon would be part of that. And then in Sun, it's more, like, nature and more, like, Gen 3-esque, which would be cool. They won't do it, 100%. It's what we're going to actually (laughs) get is the same old, you start off in a town, you go into travel (laughs) through eight gyms, you, like, there's not going to be any... Yeah. playing with the formula it's going to be all cosmetic probably and, yeah, yeah. but again i'm excited for it because i think they're going to take everything that was good about gen 6 and actually fix the problems and make yeah, it better it'll, it'll be great um, more megas too who do you, who would you like to see get a mega evolution because you know we're getting them i'm not a big fan of megas as is but um who's deserving of megas snorlax would be cool Mega Snorlax, just make him even fatter. Just make him easier. no. I, I would make him skinny. I would literally well, make like a jacked Snorlax. Well, yeah. not jacked, but like I would. That would be like the ultimate. Like you take Snorlax, and all of a sudden it's like Snorlax, but it's this super almost like twig like. <laughs> that would just mess with people. Like that would uh, be weird. I guess there's nothing that really stands out that I can think of. Well, um, I, well, let's say this: they will almost undoubtedly take old starters and give them a mega because like they've done it with gen one and now gen three yeah so, so gen, gen two, two or four gen two or four starters probably are gonna get megas like a shiny a mega a mega for alligator would be cool that whole line um, would be pretty sweet the two that stood out to me i want to see like a mega hitmonchan and hitmonlee i think they yeah. would be really cool i've always yeah. been a fan of those guys i don't yeah. know why what or like a mega like primate, primate or something like that. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of primate. He's well, of, can I, Lapras I'd, I'd get something? Even if it gets a pre-evolution, like Lapras is the I type of Pokemon Lapras, that deserves. I think Lapras is very deserving of a pre-evolution because, like, I or just can't a imagine... post-evolution, like just something. I just like, can't imagine a giant Lapras coming out of an egg. 
Like it just right. It's just like right. It's weird to me, but can Lapras be in an egg? Yeah. Oh, you hatch, okay. You hatch Lapras from eggs. Okay. Well, Kangaskhan's kind of the same way in that sense. Yeah, and co- comes out with a baby. Yeah, like, I know. Yeah, I it, know. It, it makes no sense. But, Teen pregnancy. Um, at its finest. But I don't know. Like, what other things would you like to see? I definitely guess starters. Um, I just want to see a solid game. Like, I don't know. I want to see like a yeah. good end game. Like me something too. that can make me keep playing. The I game just can we please just and not get, want to restart. Files. Why do we need to have eight gems? Like, can we please? Like, wouldn't it be so cool? If we get eight gems. We beat them. We beat the elite four. Everything's good. And then even if we don't get to go back to Johto, or even if we don't get to go back to Hoenn or Sinnoh, wouldn't it be amazing if like there was even just like two extra gym leaders, like who well, like, were like the ultimate gym leaders? <laughs> like, if you've ever watched the anime, you freaking you, <laughs> you know. You see Gary open has like sixteen like, has, like, badges. He has like other badges from other places, right. like badges that don't exist. But and... in the anime's defense, like I, I had this conversation with Rob yesterday. Yeah, they have like a pink Butterfree, which isn't Butterfree shiny. They have like yeah, a glass an- onyx. The like, anime did some things that were different. Crystal sure. onyx, but yeah, so like they they get away with some of that stuff um but yeah. i do agree with you I, I think that's absolutely like i think it'd be great to a few like, more gym leaders I, like a few post-game battles that or like instead of having just eight gyms maybe put in 12 gyms or 16 gyms well, and have like so you can't you don't have to fight them in a specific order that'd be cool like when you, you take use out, your type when advantage? you take out the one gym the next gym that you could potentially beat... Their Pokemon level... Their Pokemon level higher. up, so they're... Well, they did the a really... They, and like, in the Pokemon Origins anime, they, like, explained that, because, like, when... Excuse me. When Red shows up to Brock's gym to start off, Brock has, like, six Pokemon in, like, a tray, and um, he shows up, and he's like, how many badges do you have? But Brock knows yeah, that. He's, that like, is, a rookie. So and Brock specifically picks, like, two lower-level Pokemon Onyx and to make it more fair, dude, to yeah. make it, like, a fight. And, like... That's cool. Like that's it. That answers like a that's question I've had forever. That's what a gym leader should be. He's like he's challenging right. them based on their skill. And That'd be cool. I think that would be great. That would be that's kind of my dream for a Pokemon yeah. game to have. I think that's that. the number one thing, right? Like they've played with like the idea of the group organization. They've yeah. played with the story. They've played with like legendary Pokemon. I would definitely. Yeah, I hate being like I hate handheld. going there and being like my team right now is a grass type, a water type, and a rock type. Right. And the next gym is a grass gym. Yeah. I need to go get a fire Pokemon or a flying right. Pokemon now to go. Well, I and don't then need, I have to go level them up. You know what? I like, don't mind that. I, I really don't. I think that's actually kind of cool in a sense that, like, it forces you out of your comfort zone and makes you, like, think on your feet. But I will say, they've been doing it for six generations now, for 20 years. That It's, it's time been to change something up. Right. Change up the formula a little bit. Even if it's just for this one game and then you want to go back, but just, like, give us something a little bit more fresh. Yeah. Um, are we going to get quadruple battles? I'm kidding. No. <laughs> that would be... We're going to get... Imagine. We're going to get six on six battles. Well, they did sky battles before, so what do you... Are they going to do space battles now? Like, what? Like, I don't know. They're going to do underground battles. I hope the finale takes place on Neptune. And, Neptune. <laughs> and you get to catch... Oh, no. Uh, yeah. No, I don't... Like, you know what I would really like to see for them to take, like, for the legendaries? What's that? I would love for them to do it, like, mythology. Like, like Greek god style. Where, like, you have, like, Zeus is, like, the lightning one. And he's, like, the king of them all. Didn't they do that with, like, Thunderous and Landorus, kind of? They did, but I'm talking, like, if they specifically... Ba- like, Thunderous and Landorus are not based on their Greek counterparts. No, like, definitely not. Imagine if, like, you know, they make, like... So let's say you have, like, the trio or whatever. So, like, the legendary dogs or, like, Mesfrit, Oxyaself. Um, imagine you had that, but it was, like, you had, um, you know, like, like, I don't know, Poseidon and Mars, and I'm, I might even be getting my, like, Greek and, like, Norse mythology. I don't know, me- messed up here. But, but yeah, like, you had, like, Mars and, like, um, Athena, and, like, like they, were, they were based on those types, and, like, yeah. Poseidon, like, right? And, like, um, all that kind of... Like, I think that'd be really cool if they did that. And, like, so, you so know... you're thinking that sun and moon are going to be... Like, a, the sun and the moon a ro- god. A Roman uh, slash Greek... Or Norse theme. or whatever, but like, like I would hope so. Yeah. Like, because it's not like God, it's not like religious, like how they did Gen Four. It's more mythology. Like, it's mythology. more like yeah, yeah, right, I which know. would be cool. And I, like, I would enjoy that. And you have like areas like the Eastern Island Heads, like all these mythological, like the ancient pyramids, like yep. areas like that where it's more like mythological based kind of thing. Like, okay. like unexplained mysteries. Like, I love the mystery of Pokemon. That's why I like Gen One and Gen Three so much because. Gen 1 has the mystery of Mewtwo going on in the background that, like, I like the things where if you poke hard enough, you will, like, be rewarded. It doesn't, it doesn't and, present itself to you automatically. And you Gen have to 3 go is the perfect it. example of that with the Reggies. 
Yeah. Trying to figure out that puzzle is ridiculous. Would you have to have a whale lord and, and a, a Remor Rid? No. Um, uh, Relicanth. Relicanth, yeah, yeah in yeah. your party. And then you have to, First like, use an escape rope then... in the right spot and, like, use flash in a cave, which makes no sense. Like, yeah, you have to use dig. flash in a spot that isn't dark. Yeah. yeah. And it's like. It's, it's really cool to unlock the secrets of the Reggies, but... Um, so, like, if they took that kind of attitude, yeah. that would be cool. But I don't know if they will. Anyways, I kind of have to get going now. Yep. It's you got a birthday celebration? Hour. It is my brother's birthday, so maybe I'll go buy him a Pokemon game for it. That'd be amazing. For his, you 30th, get him, his 30th birthday. You should get him Pokemon Conquest. Pokemon Conquest? Okay. I never played that game. I kind of want to. I'll get, him, uh, I'll get him Pikachu Detective. <sighs> <laughs> we might get that localized tomorrow but anyway yeah this has been our look at the 20th anniversary pokemon a little bit of a retrospective for you guys we hope you enjoyed um and let us know in the comments like what you guys want to see for pokemon's 20th if you think our, our ideas could literally everything we just talked about could be proven completely wrong like from yesterday like we, we don't know we probably sound like absolute crazy right, right now but um yeah so we hope you enjoyed and maybe we'll see you soon Take care, guys, and as I always say, happy hunting. In petite rhinos. Oh, some français. <laughs>